Hello everyone. I believe the stream has started. So maybe we we will wait a minute or two and maybe more people will join. But today's topic is animations. Animations in the cursor editor and in Reward Paint. Uh, we have a comment. Audio streams. Mm -hmm. Can you see what's happening or no? Type a comment. Yeah, yes. Okay, so let's start. Uh, oh, let me show you one of these cursors that I have made during the last week. And let's start with this one. So, it's an animated cursor, it's a, an arrow and it's inflating. You can see the animations here. So let me delete these frames. And now we have just two frames. And you can see that uh, these frames are using uh, vector shapes. This is a single vector shape uh, with a line symmetry effect. That means that I have only uh, I only needed to draw this half of the arrow, the left, and the the right side of the arrow is automatically created on the left side. So that means that if I, for example, change this left side, the right side will automatically adjust. So let me bring it back and I will also delete uh, this second frame. So I'll be able to show you how I have made this cursor. And maybe we will also remove some of these formats. This is a 32 times 32 pixels cursor is 48 pixels and 64 pixels. So let me just reduce it to, let's say, 48, the middle one. So it's pretty easy to create a cursor like this. You just uh, use this shape tool here and draw something. like this and I have already this cursor shape created so let me delete this. So once you have this first frame of your cursors, cursor, once you are happy with this first frame you can uh, duplicate this frame and select the second frame which is now the same as the first one and you can now start modifying this second frame. So let me replicate what I have done uh, before. So I will just adjust these shapes. Or maybe I will move this point somewhere. So now it looks that like the, the, the shape is inflated. This that's how I wanted to make it. And we can have a look at the other effect that is applied to this layer. And this is the bevel effect, but its uh, strength is set to 0%. So let me set it to 100%. And now we have the bevel effect on this second frame, but on the first frame, this 
effect is still set to 0%, so it's not visible. That means that uh, the first frame is without the effect and the second frame is with this, this effect. And uh, the new function that should help you create smoother animations faster is here on this button. I'm not uh, sure how the final name of this function will be. Maybe it will be called interpolate frame. Maybe it will stay as morph. Uh, I'm open to suge suggestions. And what this function does is it creates new frames. You can select how many frames you want created. Let me set this, for example, to 6. You click OK and new frames will be automatically added to the animation. You can now select these frames and maybe increase the speed of these frames. And you can see here on the preview, maybe I will show you like this, that the first and last frames are smoothly transformed from the first to the second. You can see it here on the preview. This, it is then easy to just select these frames, drag and, and drop them with the control key pressed to copy them. Then you can reverse the order of these selected frames and you have a cursor very similar to the one I have added to the cursor library. And you can see that in these intermediate frames the bevel effect is being increased. It started at 0% here and on the first generated frame it's at 14% and so on. So that means that you can uh, interpolate between shapes. This is the shape on the first frame. This is the shape on the last frame. And on the frames in between, the shape is something in between the first and last frames. And uh, let me show you what you can do, what more you can do with this function. So we have already seen that you can interpolate the shape of the frame. We have seen that you can interpolate the parameters of the of the layer style styles that, that are applied to these frames. And you can for example also interpolate the color. So if I change the color of this second frame to blue and then run the fun function again, the arrow will transform, transform from orange to blue. So let me do this all again. And the animation uh, changes color. So this can help you create smooth cursors. Uh, you have to be very careful when you use this, this function. It will only work if the two frames that, that you are interpolating between uh, have the si same kind of uh, layers. 
in my case that, that is true, I have a single vector layer in the first frame and a single vector layer in the second frame. And in case of vector layers, you also have to have the same kind and same kind of objects inside the vector layer. And when you are using this arbitrary shape, then you also have to guarantee that the number of uh, points is the same in both cases. So you cannot have, you cannot, for example, add a new point here. If you do that, it will not interpolate the frames. It will just fail. And you can see that it does not work. If you want to do something like that, you also have to add a new point to the first frame. So now I have the same number of points, so it will work again. So now the animation is a bit, a little bit different. Yeah, we have a comment. The uh, morph button is changing the vector points. Yes, uh, it is changing. Uh, let me show you something in Reward Paint. I have a shape here. And you can see that here in this box we have a text representation of the shape. So the morph function takes all these numbers and if it finds the same number of numbers in both, then it will interpolate each number individually. And that is true for uh, other things. For example, if I uh, let, me, let me delete this again. If I create an ellipse here, we are still using this uh, symmetry operation. Then, so there are two ellipses. So the ellipse is defined by the center, the size, and the orientation. If I copy this ellipse here on the second. Maybe move it, rotate it, and do the morph. You can see that the ellipse, ellipse is moving and rotating. Every number number in the that represents the ellipse is interpolated. If you use uh, raster layers, they will be just uh, blended from the one to the other. So that is not very useful. You can use that if you want to appear, if you want to do something for it. That is um, visible on one frame and not visible on the other to smoothly appear. But uh, this function is best used with vector layers and with layer styles. Uh, we can also do one more. Let me delete uh, this ellipse, these frames, and maybe we will add a shadow effect to this frame. Hmm, where is shadow? And let's make it visible. So move it. Like this, I can copy this effect and paste it here. You can use clipboard and with effects, and we can change, for example, the size, we can change the color here, maybe we can move this, and again. When I run the morph operation, 
the shadow will be changed from the black to the red and its position and size will be changing so uh, when you are creating your cursors or animations in real world paint you just define def define a couple of frames and then interpolate between them you just have to be careful that the number of objects in two consecutive frames has to be the same so where has this been all my life well maybe uh, at the end of the stream i will show you the source code for these new effects and how much work it took to add it uh, one more thing i want to mention and that is uh, this fade uh, modifier on the bevel effect Be, let me show let me show this in a reward paint that will be better so when I add for example devil oh, that's not very visible let's see who's oh, let me saw it So we have a bevel effect here applied to this layer. When you right click here on the effect, you can see uh, this line here. And this applies a style modifier to this effect. So I click on it and you can see that here appears this line that defines the strength uh, of the bevel effect so it modifies how the bevel effect is applied and here it is set to 50 percent this is the normal bevel effect and you can disable it and you can of course interpolate this strength there is uh, also some <laughs> funny business going on you can go over 100% to create some weird looking effects and you can also go to minus uh, minus up to minus 500% that does, does something uh, that is the opposite of this first effect mm. When is this useful? It is useful when you are interpolating effects and you want smooth smooth transition. And sometimes it is uh, it can be useful. Maybe let me find something. And skip. So let me, for example, copy these photographs and we will create a new and apply, for example, the colorize effect on it. And you can see that this colorize effect is pretty intense and you you may choose to reduce its uh, impact on the image so this is at 100 percent and you can colorize it only slightly so we can modify uh, other existing effects with it one funny thing you can do with it is if you use for example, where is it? The blur effect to make something blurry. 
such as well, like well, yeah, it's, it's, you can put effects on effects, and if you uh, use this fade effect, I'm also not sure that uh, the fade effect will be the final name of this. If anyone has a good suggestion, I will change the name of this meta effect. So you can uh, uh, modify the effect of the blur and you can go to minus 100% for example and this will sometimes make it more sharp depends it depends on on the image so uh, this is a useful effect modifier so are there any questions uh, regarding the first editor so the morph tool it should be you can experiment with it i will uh, upload this version of the cursor editor after the stream ends and uh, update the description on my blog and you will be able to download this and play with it uh, there are more changes coming one of them is support for more roles location select and person select i have not tested tested this yet but it should work strength effect opacity fade effect yeah yeah the fade name is not not, not the best it changes how intense the original effect is so maybe effect intensity but i'm not sure so this is um, one of the changes and there was also a request to add some new wizards for generating cursors so there will be two new wizards one for generating uh, move and resize cursors so you can generate this kind of cursor you can generate uh, all five, five types you can adjust sizes outline with colors and such just like with this arrow so, that's one thing and you can also generate hand you can adjust its size outline weight and again colors hmm. it doesn't look very good so yeah oh templates hmm. These are no, not really templates. Templates. They just generate this shape. It's a parametric shape. I will probably change the wizards in the next build because right now they just draw into the uh, raster layer and they will probably generate a vector shape in the new vector layer in the next version, but not not in this build so so let me let me show you how the morph effect how difficult it was to create it you can see that I'm using a very 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 old Visual Studio because reasons it was it would be pretty difficult to update everything and i will eventually get to it but i want one more version uh, created using this old version of visual studio because it allows me to produce 
programs that run on Windows XP, Windows 2000, on old version of Windows, and that is important for some people. So the, the next version will still support Windows XP, Windows Vista, Windows 7, up to Windows 11, but the version after that I will be using a new version of the Visual Studio and that will only support Windows 7 and up. So where it is? Where is it? It's not here. So, yes, this is this, the file that does the morphing. We can see that it has 70, uh, 770 lines. That's not too much. And if uh, this is basically a plugin that was added to or functionality like this can be added in a plugin. I didn't have to modify anything else. I just had to add this one file. And um, it just works. So if anyone is interested, interested in creating plugins for reward paint or cursor editor or whatever, it is possible and I will help you with that. So you can see that this relatively powerful effect didn't take too much work. And there is one more thing that I want to talk about today. And that is modifying the user interface of real or pain or any other application. If you go to application options and en enable this checkbox, you will be able to modify uh, buttons in toolbars and things like that. And you can see how this morph button was added to this toolbar. So if, if you right click on, tool, to, on the toolbar and click configure the toolbar, you will see this scary looking configuration window. And uh, this list of items represents the buttons that are here. So the last one represents this, this morph operation. And for example, you can rename it, you can cho cho choose an icon for it, I don't know, let me choose something. And you can, for example, also choose a preview window. So I now modified this. It has an icon. Let me duplicate the frame so that it works and maybe delete this. You will see how uh, what it does when it works with raster layers, not vectors. So you can now see that you have a preview of the generated animation. And if you, for example, choose 20 steps, you will see that it will slowly fade off from this hand to an empty frame. So you can uh, do this modification for other buttons too, but be careful. You can, you can uh, destroy things. And these uh, wizards here, they are made in JavaScript, so if you know how to do JavaScript, you can modify them, you can create your own scripts. So for example, this script here creates the hand. Here is a 
vector shape of the hand I have drawn manually earlier and this code around uh, takes into account the different parameters the colors, the size, the outline, outline width and adjusts the shape accordingly and then draws the shape so that's it so if there are any questions I will answer them if no then I will end the stream and we will meet again um, in three weeks and next time I think uh, we will look at the icon editor and what's what's new what new functions you can expect in the icon editor Uh, are you publishing beta for all this stuff? Uh, yes, uh, it will be published. Give me like half an hour and I will upload this into some special preview folder and you will find the link uh, on my blog. I will update the build for the reward paint application and I will create a link for the cursor editor with this morph function. Uh, also I have uh, added a new pre preset here. Windows 10 and 11 cursors also use sometimes uh, a new size. 64 times 64 pixels so if you want to create larger cursors you will now have this preset by the way you can freely choose uh, the sizes of your cursor so if you type here 32 comma 64 it will just create these two sizes and it that, that works even in the old version so no more no more questions so I think uh, I'm going to have a um, yeah you you were able to make it work in uh, Vine under Linux Yes, so please report all problems to me and I will try to eventually fix them. So, okay, uh, goodbye for now and I will get to publishing the preview version. Uh, I, yeah, it's mostly work, but I don't think, uh, for example, script, the JavaScript is uh, will not work under Wine, under Linux, but everything else should work, I think. Okay, so uh, goodbye and see you in three weeks.